Hey guys, this is Drew at the Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be going over some coins that we were sent by a client to review and possibly send in for grading. And a lot of this has to do with um, just what we've been talking about recently about CAC, but also about uh, coin grading, just bettering our eye. And I hope in about four or five years when I'm, you know, been thoroughly sending stuff in and going through a lot, um, I start to get things down pat. And that's what we try to do and try to help you guys out with. So um, we're going to talk about some coins that we got from a client, though. Give our perspective, our opinion. Should they be sent in? Uh, have they been cleaned? Are they genuine? A lot of things uh, you're going to want to watch and understand about this video. We actually found uh, that one of these coins we felt were counterfeit. And so uh, we hope you guys enjoy this part of the video. We hope you guys uh, really... Uh, start to grasp and understand that the more coins you see, the better coin grader you are, and the more uh, people you can help in the hobby in terms of finding the right coin for them. And, um, you know, you're, like I said, you're developing a million dollar eye. So let's show you guys some coins, then come back for a conclusion. And uh, I think you guys will like these ones. Alrighty, so this is the type of analysis that we do every single time we want to help somebody send in some coins and we just give them our honest opinion because the real reason why we do that is so that they don't lose money in the end and they make sure that the coins they send off are nice, genuine, and not cleaned. I'm going to send you guys, show you guys a few coins that I'm going to send in and then a few coins from somebody else. So when we take a look at this coin here, this is a 1846 uh, seated quarter. The reason why I'm sending this coin in is because I didn't see too many problems on the obverse of the coin when I was looking at it. I'm sorry it's in this 2x2, two two. it's just the way it is, but uh, just not many problems in the fields here. The luster is still okay, I don't see, I mean I think there's just some rubbing on the high points. But I do think this coin's a low MS coin. I do think it, it might get an MS62, possibly maybe an MS63. It's just my opinion of the piece just because, I mean, I like it a lot and when taking a look at it with loop, I thought it was just a nice genuine coin and it's been on inventory for a while and so a lot of the times when you're waiting on, you know, stuff to sell, sometimes it's just easier to send some stuff off and uh, get a second opinion. And once it's in a holder, maybe someone thinks differently of it. And uh, sometimes when a coin's mint state and it's a little bit of a tougher coin, it can be harder for someone to, you know, take the leap on it. And so that's completely understandable. And when we're taking a look at this coin, it's the 1840 seated half dollar. And the reason why I'm saying this coin is because I just like the originality of the coin and the way it looks. Um, you know, just, I don't know, some, something about it really makes me happy. And when I take a look at the reverse here, it's a small O variety, which I didn't, uh, which I didn't think about at first. But then when I was taking a look at it, I'm like, man, that's pretty cool. And so... And it's, there was not too many in a small O variety, and so uh, saying this coin and getting it authenticated really, uh, I don't know, piqued my interest, and I wasn't really concerned about the immediate money. wanted to take some time, hopefully send it in, uh, you know, send it in this time and see what they think. I think this one, really, I think in, in you know, honest ballpark, it's probably a VF30 to VF35. Just a lot of wear on the high points, and that's kind of where I see on the coin here. Um... And I like being a little strict on my grades, so if something comes back better than expected, then that's what we want. We don't want wishful thinking when it comes to coin grading. And uh, yeah, I think it's a stellar coin. Let me know what you guys think as well. It's sitting on this tape-toned 1887S Morgan dollar. A little bit of a better date in mid-state. Um, you can take a look, and there's some a little bit of rubbing on the high points here. But overall, strong strike. Um, still some underlying luster also. Not the most beautiful toning, but like I said, if we can get that sucker in a holder, that would be wonderful. Nice little uh, tab toning on the reverse, a little bit of rainbow, but you know, a little bit of rub like we were talking about, um, and uh, it's really on those breast feathers there. But I do think this coin, ideally, when I when I priced it out and also you know wrote down the grade projection, I do think this one's a min state 63 to min state 64. It's really just a coin flip on what the graders think and what their decision is. But uh, let's leave that up to them and uh, just give you my perspective. Here's a coin that I've had for a while also. It's an 1807 uh, Drapust Half. 
I think, you know, I've seen a few of these that I bought, and I think this one is going to be a VG8 to VG10, just based on the wear in the center of the, you know, the center of the bust here. And there's just a lot of uh, things I like about this coin. You know, nice, even circulated surfaces, and everything's just nice, bold, and beautiful. When you take a look at, uh, you know, the reverse, it's a lot stronger than you would see with most VG8s. That's why I was leaning on the side of VG10. And uh, we'll see how this one goes. It might go even a little bit better than that, just because of how nice the reverse is. And most of the time when I'm buying coins that, you know, are in the good six, VG8, all that kind of stuff, um, it's it's mainly going to have a weak reverse. Um, there's a few dings down there and a little bit right here. But I don't think that will be too much of a play in uh, the grading decision. Are you guys enjoying today's video so far? If you are, please leave a like. Uh, it really help us reach more people, get them involved in the grading game, and just you know help people feel better about the hobby and what they think about it. Uh, comment your thoughts on what you think of the coin so far, and subscribe if you're new. But I won't take up any more of your time. Let's get back to today's video. Up next, uh, we're going to take a look at a few coins from our friend here, give him an honest opinion while we're giving you an honest opinion about this coin. This is 1875 Carson City 20 cent silver. Or 20, yeah, 20 cent silver. Nice even circulation on the coin. I think it's just a, a beautiful piece. Uh, I've seen a lot of these lately, and uh, I think this one would be VF20 to VF25. Um, just based on the high points of the coin, but also uh, it's been through the ringer. And uh, a lot of that's a lot of this still is is present here, which is very good. So uh, it's just a, it's just a toss up for me, VF20 to VF25. And I'm not going to go through too much detail on every single coin. You guys can look up different images, get your books out, and try to uh, research it with me. But it's just you know wanted to give you guys each an individual opinion on on these, and just the analysis that you should give, especially when you're sending some coins in, because you like I said, you don't want to uh, spend too much money. You don't want to. You don't want to waste it on the wrong coin. But up next, we have a 1920 Pilgrim commemorative half. Taking a look at this coin, the luster is very strong. There are a lot of kind of marks uh, prevalent in the fields here. But based on the luster, I do think this is a nicer coin. And uh, uh, just you know, just alone, when you take a look at the luster and it's very strong on a coin, that really can set it apart and give it that. Uh, Give it that a little bit of a bump and grade if that makes sense. And so my projection on this coin, based on the marks, would be MS63. But since it has some really strong, beautiful luster, I do think this one would go Mint State 64. And uh, yeah, I think PCGS will like this one if our uh, client plans to send this one in. And uh, I like I'm trying to do in every single one of these videos is tell you that we have a lot of coins that we plan on sending in. And uh, the reason being is because we like to help people out when they don't have a membership or they don't have this CAC membership. And then at the end, if they want to sell some coins to us when it gets back, that's all up to them. Up next is, uh, this is Alabama, I think, uh, in 1921 Alabama, and commemorative half. When you take a look at the, the face here, you can see a lot of like, like scratches or uh, just a lot of circulation that's happened to this coin. Still some underlying luster, as you can see. It's just, uh, it's pretty present still. But you can see a lot of the high points are really broken in here. So what I would say about this coin and what my projection would be would be XF45 to AU50. And there's also a spot here, and I don't know what they would say about the scratches. So uh, yeah, I would say about XF45 if they net grade this one down. It's just, uh, it's too white of a coin to me to be in the AU territory and um, you know it's still an interesting coin but I'm not sure if it's worth being sent in it may look sometimes when you're taking a look at coins it may look MS or AU in its appearance but when you take a look at the circulation that's when you really get down to the nitty gritty you could tell right here all the cheek is missing basically his forehead's really wor worked in um, just a lot of things on this coin that would give me an XF or early AU kind of vibe to it and so, uh, you know, still a nice pretty coin, but I don't think this one really should be sent in from my personal opinion. Uh, but it is up to the client, but I like to give my opinion also. That's why we're doing this. This is 1886. Uh, this is, it's a really nice $5 gold. And as you take a look, you know, there's, there's some, uh, you know, a lot of circulation on this coin. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, just a lot of 
scratches and stuff, but that's just the way that you know really soft gold is. And uh, you know the thing that I like about this coin is it's just a nice rich gold color to it. Um, it's still a lot of the details are popping up on the coin. I do think it'll have a really nice time at grading. I would give this coin an XF45 based on just everything that I see with this coin. Still working on gold in terms of its grading, but I do think this one has a strong enough detail to you know send in, check for auth, uh, you know authentication, and uh, you know that sometimes for gold is what you need because a lot there's a lot of fakes out there, even that you know are you they use old gold. Um, to make fakes to give it that numismatic value so getting this one in a holder um, is something that I think is a must and uh, let's see how this one goes if it's being sent in up next is a 1909s Indian head scent this one's uh, you know it's it's in a condition that you find most 1909s uh, Indian head scents in just really uh, evenly circulated still handled with care and it's just a it's just a coin you probably also want to get in a holder. I would give this coin a, a fine 12 or a fine 15, just based on its uh, just based on its condition and what I believe about the coin. But I could be very wrong on this piece because uh, still working a little bit on Indian Head Sense and what I think about their grade. And uh, a lot of the circulation you can see is really just on the Indian here. Liberty's gone, and uh, you know it's still a nice, beautiful coin. Another coin I would just send in because there is a lot of uh, value in coins like this. They're key dates, they're tough to find still, and people want them for their collection. And so, another one I would really suggest sending in. Up next, we have a really nice gold dollar. Uh, this one is from 1871. It's a tough date for sure. And so, uh, this one I also would send in. I think there's only 3,500 minted of this coin. And I would give this one just based on you know a lot of the things that I see and when I was taking a look at it yesterday I do think this one really is a shot at MS uh, just nice color on the coin also and I think this one might get an AU58 to, to MS61, MS62 but uh, it's just a nice strong coin not too many problems with it a light scratch in front of the head there as you can see but I mean overall the coins really nice this is a coin that you really should buy in any circumstance if you can get it for the right price, just super tough. I had one recently that we sold for around $700 in AU58. And so that's something that you should consider understanding the key dates of a series. And this one's really a tough date for gold dollars. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a beautiful coin. Very nice. Up next is this 1870 uh, shield nickel. Taking a look at this coin, I'm not too sure what to think of it. I've never actually seen an 1870 or a shield nickel before. Taking a look at this coin, just, I don't know. What do you guys think of this coin? I'm going to leave this one up to you guys because I'm not too sure how to grade this one. I've never actually graded a shield nickel before. And uh, I don't know. My opinion is kind of uh, indifferent on this one. And so your comment down below will help uh, help our client understand this one indefinitely and uh, see if he wants to send it in. The next one we want to send to show you guys is this nice little gold piece here. Uh, I'm taking a look at it. There's a lot of kind of darkness in the fields here. This one might be just a, a cleaned piece, a clean dollar. It's uh, very hard to tell though with these because sometimes they pass them, sometimes they don't. And uh, it's uh, something that I have never actually graded before but it does seem to be in the AU territory, just based on its, its uh, you know, just based on its details, based on the luster that it still has. And there is a little bit of circulation that I can see on the coin, but giving you uh, that that AU type of uh, type of grade, I think, is uh, is something that's understandable for this coin. And uh, there's a lot of peripheral scratches in the fields, as you can see, and that might hold it back also. Up next is the 1861. Uh, this one is uh, three cents silver. Uh, I think this one's nice, but I do think this one is probably been dipped or cleaned. There's a lot of kind of just a lot of scratches on the coin. A lot of things that I would say that wouldn't make this coin in a holder. Uh, I've seen a lot of these in details grades, and I do think this one is in a details grade just because there's a lot of hairlines, a lot of scratches, a lot of things that I would say that 
just to make it different from uh, what they would what they would really want in a straight grade holder. And uh, like I said, let me know what you guys think down below. It's a little bit tougher for me to show you guys, but you can just see that lackluster. Um, you know, the surfaces have kind of been just changed a little bit, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I do think this one is AU details cleaned. And I wouldn't send that one in personally. It just wouldn't, wouldn't be me. Up next is 1826. Cap bust half. I've seen a lot of these going straight grade holders, but it's pretty tough sometimes since we're sending this one through PCGS if it'll have a shot. Um, the coins, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of just even wear on the coin, and the fields are a little bit cleany to me. You don't really want a cap bust to look like this most times when you're buying it. But um, I do think this one would be um, in a, you know XF details or VF details territory. I'm not too sure what they would think of the old cleaning and if they would let it pass. It is an old coin, so it'd be you know either VF or XF or VF or XF details. And I think it would just be a high VF. Uh, you know, nice, beautiful, even wear, like I said. But I'm not too sure what they will think of the old cleaning on this coin. Uh, it is pretty prevalent. Next coin is an 1908S Indian head scent. This one's just a little bit better than the 1909S. You can t see the Liberty right there. And uh, I do think this one is also a nice, strong, evenly circulated coin. I think this one is probably a VF20 fine 15 area. Uh, just an interesting coin. I'm not too sure if it's worth being sent in just because it's not really much money in that, in that territory. But I think VF20 you know, possibly a VF25 on this coin. And uh, maybe he just wants it certified for a family member, all that kind of stuff. But uh, I do think it would pass. And uh, if he did want to send it in, maybe for something for his collection, that would be something good also. <clears throat> Up next is an uh, uncirculated 1928 piece dollar. While I was taking a look at this coin, you can kind of see some just lines on the coin. You can kind of see all these like these striations, and it's going to be all over the coin, all over the face, all over the uh, the, uh, the back of the head here. Um, something about this coin really just doesn't make me feel good. Uh, I just don't think it's really what you'd want to send in personally. When you take a look at all these uh, marks here as well, you can kind of see some scratches. This coin definitely has been cleaned, so I personally would not send this coin in. It's an Unk Details Cleaned 1928. And, uh, you know, maybe sometimes, like I said, though, when it's, you know, something's been cleaned, you still want it in a holder, you still want that uh, general understanding amongst collectors that this coin is still an Unk coin, but it has been cleaned, like I said. But I don't think this one really should be sent in if I was, if I was going to do it, but still nice, strong coin. We'll see how that one goes if he decides to send it in. Here is a, I can't say, it's like sequential or something, a commemorative half dollar. Nice, uh, nice luster on the coin. Um, when taking a look at the, the high points, I still think uh, there might be just rubbing here. I'm not too sure. But luster is pretty nice. Don't You, do, you don't see luster on this coin like this too often. It may have been dipped, from my personal opinion, or slightly polished. I'm uh, just taking a look at that bell. I mean, it just lights up in your face. Uh, yeah, I'm on the fence with either it was just really harshly dipped, or it was, you know, or it was polished in some way. Uh, but I would give this one probably a MS to MS details, just based on my perspective of the coin. There's a lot of uh, a lot of things that I question with just. Really nicely lustered sequential uh, uh, commemorative halves. All, most of the time when I see them, they're just really harshly toned. And uh, we'll see how this one goes. I do think it's, you know, I might have a shot for sure. But yeah, I just have to be more of a, more of a just giving you my opinion rather than being wishful thinking. And when I do, if I do wishful thinking, like, you know, with sending coins into people, or sending coins into PCGS for people, Wishful thinking can get me in trouble because they said, oh, I thought you said this, and now it came back as that. And sometimes it just be more safe than sorry. Um, but up next is 1853. Um, this one's the half dime, and it's the uh, O-Mint. 
but nice even wear on the coin. A little bit of old cleaning, which is to be expected. Uh, another coin I would say in the VF25, maybe VF30 territory. Just uh, nice even wear, nice originality on the reverse. And uh, nice, beautiful coin. I probably sell, sold this one to him because we had a lot of half dimes that came in, and uh, I do like this coin, and I do hope it, I do hope and do think it will do well. And uh, that's what we do with most of our coins when we try to sell them. Just make sure that they're the nicest ones possible. Take a look at this coin. There's a little bit of uh, you know striations out in the field. This one might uh, might pass, but I do think there's some type of chemical that may have been put on this coin. You can kind of see just lackluster here, suppressed luster in the field, suppressed luster on the on the body, um, and there's really not really like any luster to it. It's just when you shine the light on it, then it finally gives it luster. But uh, it's just it's hard to explain, but it just feels to me like the obverse has been cleaned. There's not really much separation between the luster on the details and the luster in the fields, and I feel like most of the time you want that differential part of the coin and uh, I don't think this one would straight grade personally I would give this one probably an unk details or AU details um, just for my personal opinion but I still do think it's really nice and uh, it would fit nice in like a, a set especially when a lot of the you know a lot of the raw stuff you can find that are still affordable up next is the 1858 flying eagle scent uh, when you take a look at the coin, there's a nice, really big uh, rim ding here, but overall the surfaces I don't see too many problems with. Uh, there's a fingerprint right here, um, but once I kind of get in the light, I do see kind of uh, a little bit of a retoning on the obverse, which kind of gives me a little bit of a red flag. Maybe this one was harshly cleaned and it was filled back in. Uh, yeah, that For the obverse, that's just very strange to me. I don't think that they would take that obverse and make it a straight grade personally. Uh, the reverse though is still okay. A little bit of an environmental here, which wouldn't really pass a CAC, but I think it would still pass a PCGS as a, as a net grade or something. But something strange about the obverse that I would say would be a details grade. Probably a VF or, or low XF details to me. That's just what I would think about the coin. I think it's just been cleaned in the past and that's what would happen. Um, here's something that's very strange and I don't see too often. It's a 1914 Denver Lincoln scent. And when I'm taking a look here uh, at this coin, I, I see this 1914 and it's very, something about it's very strange. I don't, I've never seen that much spacing between the 19 and the 14. It's like they were trying to fit the D in there somewhere. That sounded wrong, but sorry about that. I do think this one is 100% a counterfeit. If you take a look at that D, I mean, it's just so poorly shaped. And you see the distance between the 19 and the 14? That, for me alone, would make this coin. It's it's definitely a counterfeit. Um, the just A lot of that stuff it has to do with just seeing so many um, different dates and different you know, coinages. And I do think this one is definitely just something about it tells me it's really just a fake 1914D. And uh, let me know what you guys think down below about this coin. Not going to go into too much detail, like I said. Maybe I can go further detail in a different video if the client lets us. But just based on those two factors really separated me from, from this coin. I didn't look at it too, off, uh, too much, but it's just a strange piece. I do think it is 100% a counterfeit. I would not send that one into PCGS. Next one, 1911. It's a $5 gold here. I don't know, it's two, two and a half, my bad. Uh, when you take a look at the luster, there's just a lot of things that have been going on in the fields here, a lot of circulation. That's to be expected, as you know. Uh, I saw one similar the other day that sold, uh, and I think this one is in the XF slash low AU territory. Um, still nice remaining luster on the coin. Just very interesting. I do think this one will do well. If it's sent in, and like I said with most gold, you're going to want to send it in, get that authentication and understanding because, you know, sometimes they have counterfeits, but also people just like buying gold when it is certified. Here is a nice Oregon Trail, 
Taking a look at the, the fields here, you can see that really nice strong bowl luster on the coin. Taking a look at the reverse here, like we were talking about in previous videos, we wanted to take a look at some spots, let's see where we go wrong. Um, luster's kind of strange on the uh, on the reverse here. Not sure if it's been over dipped or, or something like that. But coin overall is interesting. I still think it would straight grade with everything that I see. Nothing too uh, out of the ordinary in my opinion. I give this one at mid state 63, mid state 64 grade. Not sure if that's circulation on the leg or just some rubbing. But if you could see, kind of, it just feels like it's a little dingy on the reverse. I don't see too, any circulation. I just kind of see some ugly toning about the coin. And uh, yeah, I would say about mid state 63 on this coin. Here's a tough coin here. Nice, uh, nice $3 gold. It's been pretty circulated, as you can see. Uh, but a nice strong 1854 $3 gold. Really nice color on the coin. And uh, taking a look at this coin, like I said, I haven't, I haven't studied and uh, I haven't really seen too many that have graded low grade for $3 golds and I haven't really graded too many gold. But I try to give my opinion when, when I got these coins in and did a little research on them. I would say this one is a VF30, VF25 condition. There is some cleaning on the coin, but like I said, sometimes they, they take it easy on the older pieces, and I do think this one might have a shot. VF20 to VF30, um, or VF25 to VF30, I think would be a strong bet on this coin. Just a nice evenly circulated coin. Liberty's still present, and uh, a lot of the details on the reverse are still, still pretty nice. And... Uh, I hope this one does well. And the last coin I want to show you guys in today's video is this Rhode Island. So we're taking a look here, and a lot of the luster is, is pretty nice. This one's a very flat coin, which means the details really doesn't jump out at you. And um, yeah, I do think this one still has some strong luster, not too many problems in the fields. And it's a very busy coin. And a lot of these you'll see will come high grade. I do think this one will probably be graded mid state 64, mid state 65. Kind of a few hits here and uh, just a little bit of rubbing and a softer strike. As you can see, a lot of this is going to come down to strike and just a few hits that you might find. There's a few kind of scratches here as well. So I'll give this one a mid state 64. But thank you guys for watching this part of the video. Let's cut it to the outro and conclusion. So in conclusion, I wanted to talk to you guys about just my perspective of the whole group. I think the commemoratives were all right. There were a few things that uh, on Alabama that really took away from me in terms of me sending it in for grading. Uh, a lot of the gold pieces were pretty nice. And you want to send those in just for authentication, but also uh, if they do grade pretty well, then you'll be looking at some decent money for sure. They'll fit into a certain price guide, especially based on condition rarity. And when you're taking a look at um, just some of the, the 1914 definitely look counterfeit. I mean. Give me your opinion. I need it. Um, and, you know, I think the, the lot overall is pretty good. I think that he'll do pretty well if he chooses to select a few that really, uh, really speak to him. And uh, I really do hope you guys enjoy this video. If you guys want to watch more videos from us, make sure to subscribe. If you guys want to like this video, that would help us a lot. We also send in coins for other people. So if you need us to look at some coins over the phone or uh, in person, just let us know. And uh, yeah, comment your thoughts on this whole batch. We really like looking forward to hearing from you and we will see you guys in the next video.